Welcome to Letters to Rising Leaders. It's a podcast series about God, soul, love, and leadership. And I'm your host, Tom Moore. For those of you joining along in my book, Letters to Rising Leaders, this is week 36, and the topic is Church Encounter. This is the first of two podcasts touching on the topic of the church. And I'd like to begin with a story. It's about a Catholic priest. He was in his rectory one day when he heard a knock. He opened the door, and there in front of him was was a woman two kids by her side, both of them looking worse for wear. May I help you? The priest asked. I'm down on my luck. I need money for groceries. Oh, this isn't how it's done. There are soup kitchens in the city, you know, he said. She stood there looking at him, for a long time. Finally, she said, are you going to lecture me or help me? The priest that encountered that woman that day was Father Arnold Weber. He was our beloved pastor at Holy Name of Jesus Church in Medina, Minnesota during the years when our kids were were growing up. And in his homilies, he often talked about that day, how it changed him, how it affected his whole conception of of the church. Because somewhere in the midst of that mother's need and his initial response, he rediscovered the real church. The real church is not a building, not an organization or a business certainly has business issues to deal with. But it's not that, nor is it a doctrine or a set of doctrines or rules or purity tests. It's not a parish. It's not even a denomination, Lutheran, Catholic, etc. The real church is the body of Christ. It's all of us. Imperfect as we are, we are the church. All of us need Jesus, and Jesus needs us. He takes what little we can give, and he makes it enough. In Matthew 18, 20, Jesus said, For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Ron Rollheiser has written that to be a mature Christian takes four things, that we are actively pursuing our private morality, that we are actively pursuing social justice, that we exhibit a gentleness of spirit, and that we are active members of a church community. What does it mean to be an active member of a church community? Attendance, of course. I think Jesus calls for more. I think Jesus calls all of us to work together to hold our church to the standards that he sets for it. In the wake of that encounter with the woman at the door, Father Arnold had to ask himself some hard questions. Who are we at the heart? And who are we at the fringes? These are the right questions for all of us, I think. At the heart, does your church place its first focus on love? The real church greets us first in love, then truth, then encouragement, so that we may receive the grace of God. At the fringes, is your church committed to entering into the world and serving at the margins? Um, Father Arnold started a charity called Arnie's Door, where he encouraged anyone in need to come to him for help. He linked our church up with a sister church in the inner city, one that was struggling, and he asked parishioners to give of their time, talent, and treasure 
even though that pulled resources away from our church. He challenged me. He asked me to get involved in the cookie cart, that charity serving underprivileged children in North Minneapolis. And he built the church that he was leading like a field of dreams. He physically did, got a big new construction project that expanded the church. But the cornerstone of that church was love. And they came and the pews filled up, standing room only, many weekends. Good leader, you too deserve such a church. And it's not just your pastor's job. We are all the church. We got to pray about it and then sort through what we're being called to contribute and then light the fire of love so that at the heart of the church, it burns with love. And at the fringes of the church, it reaches out in love. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12, and 13, it says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. We are all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slave and free, and all made to drink of one spirit. I'll leave it there. The song for this week is Palms Together. Robert Berry joins me in instrumentals and Mary Ellen Duell in harmony. Enjoy. Down, down, down we go Till our knees fall to the floor Palms together, hands held high We give thanks to Christ our Lord When two or more of you are gathered Christ is there in your midst Come with thanks to his table Come share in his gift Down, down, down we go Till our knees fall to the floor Hands held high, we give thanks to Christ our Lord. Come to church, you heavy laden, caught inside your self made cage. Bring your cares to precious Jesus. Your Lord and save your age to age. Down, down, down we go till our knees fall to the floor. Palms together, hands held. Life is short and time's a wasted. Jesus needs our helping hands. He needs his church to build the kingdom. But first, let's give him thanks.
palms together, hands held high, we give thanks to Christ our Lord. Well, that's it for today. I hope you'll join us next week for the next episode in this Letters to Rising Leaders podcast series. As I say each week, leader of goodness, go in faith to love and heal the world.